Hey zoo fans, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome to Tecton Zoo, where today we're going to be building this huge habitat for the snow leopard. Oh, this took a while, which is why there was no episode last week. Apologies for that. What I'm trying to achieve here is to build a habitat that meets all the needs of the snow leopards and is sort of the a perfect snow leopard habitat while also being this huge modernist, uh, pretty arresting looking kind of structure. So there are loads of things that you need to consider for a snow leopard habitat. I've been through the animal care manual for the snow leopard as always. And um, yeah, they need a lot of verticality. Obviously they live in mountains in the Himalaya. So they need the opportunity to be up high off the ground as much as possible. They like sun climbing. Um, water isn't particularly important, um, but you can have it in there. But they're not big swimmers or anything like that. Obviously the water is pretty cold <laughs> where they live. Uh, and finally, it's strongly recommended that the habitat is completely covered or completely enclosed because all cats uh, are good at climbing, obviously, and snow leopards are pretty much the champions living up in the mountains. I'm sure you've all seen the planet Earth footage of them sort of chasing goats down vertical mountain sides and things like that. So pretty good at climbing an incredible jump range. In fact, according to the Zoopedia, they can jump six meters straight up into the air. Uh, and according to the other page on the Zoopedia, you need to have a fence of at least three meters to contain them. I think that might be a uh, mistake, <laughs> but um, yeah, they need to be enclosed. So that is what we're gonna be doing. So the main sort of inspiration for this build to begin with was the entrance I built for Pomoja Wildlife Park. I really liked the um, the vertical structures in the entrance. I wanted to do something similar here to sort of bring to mind a mountain without actually building a big sort of fake rock mountain. So I started off having them like they are here at sort of different heights like they are at Pomoja Wildlife Park. But later on I decided that it would be better if they actually just formed a more obvious sort of mountain shape. So I rearranged them so they just, this one we're working on here is the shortest and the one in the middle is the tallest uh, and then the same on the other side. So it forms more of a classic mountain shape. So just using loads of white uh, concrete or plaster pieces as always to make these. And then we've got the beginnings of the ramps that are gonna allow the snow leopards to spend a lot of time off of the ground, which is really important. And there's gonna be a whole lot more of the ramps and things like that for them as the build progresses. So this is gonna be the first habitat in the last major area in Tecton Zoo, uh, which is kind of, uh, kind of makes me sad. <laughs> but um, this is gonna be Tecton Mountain. Um, so as what this is gonna be sort of the the centerpiece, uh, not that it'll actually be in the center. Maybe the climax is a better um, description for it, right at the end of the zoo. And leading up to it, we're gonna have a couple more habitats of animals that live at various stages of the mountain. So they're not all gonna live in the, the same mountains in the wild, but we're gonna have, um, the plan at the moment is that we go from the steps um, where we're gonna have Pajalski's horse, then up into the slopes with the Japanese macaque, and then finally the summit with the snow leopards. So I think that's gonna work pretty well. Um, and we're gonna lead out of the primates area and up into the mountain area. So working on the rest of the ramps here, we're gonna have an enrichment feeder on a platform here which is gonna have guest viewing right next to it so they can get a really good view of feeding time. And then under the ramp at the back is gonna be their indoor quarters. So snow leopards should be pretty happy in England, um, apart from at the height of summer, which uh, <laughs> if you live in England, no, normally lasts about a week, <laughs> then um, the temperature is gonna be pretty good for them. And on those rare days where it is really hot, they're gonna have a cool indoor area to retire to. All of these um, projections coming out of it and various other things that we're gonna build are gonna make loads and loads of little sort of hidey places for the snow leopards because they are pretty shy. And all these circles I'm building here, I'm building them as complete circles so we can get them nice and smooth. 
and then the back half where we are here are going to be deleted so the um, habitat is only going to be the front half of this structure otherwise the, the snow leopard is going to get lost in it but yeah we want them looking nice and smooth and I want three different heights mainly throughout the build so we've got the ground level then we go up to the outer um, no sorry the inner ring that I'm building here and then slightly lower than that will be the outer ring and we're going to put a ramp in here to allow the leopards to get between them they can also jump between them which is really cool once they're in there I wasn't sure if they were going to do that but they do uh, and that looks really good and yeah it just gives them loads of different heights as their uh, natural environment would and this is just the kind of um, slightly ridiculous uh, modernist architecture that I like um, I've gone as about as crazy as I have done in this zoo on this I don't want to get too uh, too modern too or postmodern or anything like that try and keep it within the realms of the classic structures that we are sort of paying tribute to in this zoo but this is about as uh, as crazy as the structures in the zoo get i'm really happy with this one when it's done uh, if you're enjoying this don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already it really helps the channel out thank you now we're going to move on and take care of the mesh which is going to enclose the entire habitat so building with the mesh in this game is famously difficult and it's definitely not something i would say i was particularly good at but i was absolutely determined that the mesh in this habitat was going to be really clean and not no janky bits no missing bits it was going to be really really good i think the last time i did a lot of um, building with the mesh pieces rather than just the mesh barriers was way back when we built the foothills of the clouded leopard habitat and i have to say if you move the camera inside that habitat <laughs> it's a mess there is some really really questionable uh, building going on in there so not this time so i'm using these plaster pieces so that we've got a grid to work with so we can rotate everything into place absolutely perfectly and then i'm just going to do the rest of the mesh manually um, so i don't even know how many mesh pieces i placed here but they line up perfectly all the way around all the way across and then they even slope down at the back to meet the back wall which we'll be building a bit later and um, yeah I'm really really happy with how this turned out I was uh, kind of nervous about starting this but I knew I wanted the whole habitat to be enclosed and that meant getting the mesh right so a lot of the mesh crosses over and once it's all put in because I've done it on the grid um, and I'm really really careful about where you place it it forms a really nice pattern in the middle like all the mesh is coming together into a central um, sort of pole which we'll again we'll build later uh, and yeah it looks pretty good when it's finished as good as the mesh ever does in this game anyway I really hate the way that um, it doesn't draw it once you get the camera far enough away because then it makes it look like <laughs> you've missed bits when you haven't and then as you move the camera in they all sort of mysteriously appear and that's really annoying um, colouring these in white to match everything else and this is the basic structure done I really uh, really like it like I say I think it looks pretty effective it's a pretty cool look um, and what we're going to do now is make sure that it works for the snow leopards and is a really good habitat for them so doing some work on the sort of main viewing gallery that the guests are going to be at the paths around this habitat are going to be on two levels so there's going to be an upper level where they see this upper part through the mesh and then there'll be a lower level where they see the ground floor of the leopard's habitat through glass a little bit like the um, lima heights in the forest area of the zoo uh, but this is a lot more uh, complicated <laughs> i think my building skills have improved in the past year using one of my favorite pieces the european light cable to attach the mesh to again i want it to look like the mesh is being held up under tension via various wires that we're going to attach to these big columns at the back and then another column in the middle and then we're going to use some plaster pieces just to tidy up this area here so that the mesh rather than sort of sometimes appearing and sometimes not appearing where it's been rotated the mesh is going to have a definite sort of piece of concrete to end at so it looks exactly the same all the way around 
And once we've done that, we'll move on to building the back wall that I mentioned for the indoor part of the, uh, the habitat. So this is gonna be rounded off nicely um, and keep the habitat from being too huge so that the guests get a good view of the, uh, the snow leopards. Um, and we're gonna put a splash of color in as well. The orange that I always use to highlight my builds, this will run around the top of it. And then underneath it will be the indoor area for the snow leopards. And this will also be where the keeper access is. Um, the keepers can traverse the entire habitat, um, which is good, otherwise it wouldn't work. So they can get up all the ramps, etc., to fill the feeders and sort out the enrichment items, clean it and everything else. And this is the sloping mesh that joins onto the mesh at the top so that the whole habitat is enclosed and uh, even IRL, the, um, the snow leopards wouldn't be able to get out. This was a bit tricky, um, but using some of the really small mesh pieces, I managed to get it so that the mesh joined onto the concrete walls everywhere. And then we're gonna put some more of the light cables in for more wires. You can see how many mesh pieces there are there. It makes my eyes hurt. Uh, I'm gonna go back in in a second and delete all the extra mesh that was rotated that we don't need anymore. And then use another one of my favorite pieces, the little bracket from the new conservation pack uh, or hanger, I think it is for tools. That's a really nice piece. Now it's time to get the barriers in. So we're gonna go with glass around the bottom. We don't need any in-game barriers around the top part because we've already got the mesh except for this bit at the front where we're going to have a really tall piece of glass in there so that the guests get an uninterrupted view of the, uh, the leopards at the feeding station at the front. Put the keeper gate in and then get rid of all this extra mesh that we don't need. And that's the outside pretty much done. Going to put some of these uh, plaster pieces in here so that again the glass at the bottom has something that it's uh, attached to it's not just growing out of the ground and then one last little touch up uh, at the front I'm gonna just put some bricks around here to make a nice curve around the glass so again the glass doesn't just end um, it's actually got something that it is uh, attached to get that the right color and yeah looking looking pretty nice from here um, oh yeah, cover up the glass dividers as well. I always do this with the plaster trim. It's slightly thinner than the other plaster piece and just is a really nice piece to use to do that. And then we're gonna start decorating. So I'm gonna have some trees actually inside the habitat coming up through the gaps in the ramps. Um, these are all climbable trees. So the leopards spend a lot of time, especially in the big tree at the back, I spend a lot of time sat up there. You'll see that in the uh, cinematics at the end. Um, I'm gonna put some glass in to keep the cool air inside this part of it uh, when it's required in the summer. And then we're gonna put a little pool in so they've got some somewhere to splash about in if they get hot. Using the um, tower pieces, which is a technique I learned from Romano Palacios to make the pool look more man-made and then we'll cover all of that or the majority of that up with rocks so that the where the terrain joins the plaster looks sort of natural and man-made at the same time which is the uh, which is the look that I'm going for it's only a little pool like I say they're not big on swimming um, if I was in the Himalayas I would want to spend as little time in any uh, water there as possible and then I'm putting a snow machine in um, I wasn't actually aware that zoos have these, I just thought it was something in, uh, in the game. But there are zoos that have snow machines that will fire up fake snow and ice so that the um, animals that live in that kind of environment feel more at home. So I'm just going to put one of the new pipes over it and make it look like it is actually firing out. And then we're going to use some mulch, uh, some rocks, some mesh to make little places where these trees could theoretically be planted and growing out from and we'll copy this all the way around the inside of the habitat um, so that each tree has its own little sort of um, space to grow from. I'm gonna put some of the new conservation park flowers in there as well. We've got some nice sort of alpine meadow style flowers that seemed pretty appropriate and they bring a nice uh, splash of color to the habitat with everything being built out of white concrete 
and then rock and stone for pretty much everything else there's not a lot of color here but we get a nice green from the trees and some flowers this log is for them to climb over I'm just sort of making a bracket to attach it to the habitat so it wouldn't be sort of a danger and uh, fall off when they were on it or something although they'd probably land on their feet being cats anyway but I thought this would um, this would look quite cool to do it like this put a sleeping area in at the back um, and this is also where the, the keepers come in there's the flowers that I mentioned a minute ago and now we're going to start building the paths oh my god this was not fun <laughs> I spent so long trying to get these paths right I need stairs to take them up to the top level I need a raised path around the top and then directly underneath the raised path I need a lowered path um, trying to get paths to work is the reason that the Lima Heights that I spoke about earlier is round it was supposed to be a much more interesting shape but as I think I mentioned in the video the paths just defeated me I ended up with just a, a completely round habitat um, with this one the front of it was always supposed to be sort of a semicircle, so I haven't had to change anything but it was really important that the, the stairs were in the right place and the paths again were really clean so you can't see any of this path when we're finished with the build the whole thing is completely covered in plaster uh, and it works perfectly the guests will walk all the way down here to look at the snow leopards um, which is really cool um, very pleased that I actually managed to get that to work and I also discovered that the leopard uh, prints barriers which have been in the game from day one I don't know if they were always flexicolor or if that's a recent change I've never used them before because they made me think of a sort of 1980s cocktail waitress or something um, but I just discovered they're flexicolor which means you can actually make them snow leopard colored so I put some of those on the floor so I thought that worked really nicely and then finally we're gonna add a little barrier here just to make sure the guests aren't poking their hands through the mesh and getting them nibbled off and that is pretty much the build done uh, it took a while but I'm really glad I spent the time on it We'll be back very soon to build the next habitat in Tecton Mountain. Thank you so much for watching as always. Stick around for the cinematics and I'll see you soon. Bye.